Hi everyone. The next 60, 70 days are the most powerful days of 2020. Now in my previous video, I talked about, well, I've talked about this year and obviously with all the stuff going on from COVID to riots, to travel bans, to lockdowns, to everything. It's a year of amazing getting out of our comfort zone and dealing with change. And it's setting the tone for the whole of this decade. And then I just did a video which was fundamentally about lighting the fire of healing our relationship with honesty. It's, I've said this to several clients this week. Now's the time over the next six months where radical honesty is the best investment, where you can really invest in getting to know what you really want and who you really are so that you can create the space for other people to do that as well, rather than try and make them conform to your ideas or what you want. Secondly, it's a time for taking negative energy and turning it into positive energy. And there's a ton of negativity around. And that's what honesty does. It takes negativity and turns it into positivity at its best. And we've got six months from late June all the way through to very early January next year, where this has been highly activated at a time where our relationship with and our understanding of what honesty really is, is evolving. And now we're on the very edge of 60 to 70 days of a real energy peak in the middle of the year. Now this happens every year from July the 23rd right through to July, uh, September the 23rd and a little bit either way as it ramps up and then it runs down. This has been known about throughout history in many, many cultures. It's been given many different names. But it is a time where there is a lot of energy available to create things that really work. And in the process, to connect with your passion, to use it to be creative and to do what you're naturally gifted at doing, to check whether it really works in the real world and then to wrap up by gaining wisdom from the experience. Now, the key is that this is happening in the middle of a year that's full of chaos and therefore change leading to new order in various ways. At a time where being radically honest, and I don't mean radical in the, in the negative sense, I mean just cut the crap and really find out who you are, what you want, and how is the most effective way for you to do what you're designed to do. It's the beginning of building the skills necessary to be able to be the authority in the world that you live in, to be of service from a point of humility so that you can create a world where survival is handled. And because of that, it's safe to love and it's safe to be truly powerful. Now, this is interesting words, but this echoes throughout history and it definitely speaks to what is unfolding in the next decade and the few decades ahead. This speaks to what's going on in our times right now and that each of us is a part of. 
and why I said at the end of my last video, if you're alive, no matter what state your life is in, you matter. Now, what you decide to do with that can waste the opportunity, can live it at a safe, mediocre level, or open up to you bringing to the table the very best of who you are. Now, how do you do that practically rather than turn this into another rah-rah philosophical, you know, it's all going to be okay at the end speech? And the first thing is recognising that this is a decade of profound change and we're laying the foundation of it now. And the chaos and the craziness you see on the news may be experienced in your own life where people seem to be lost or trying to force their opinions on other people, where they're separating from each other over differences in the way they see the world and the way they think, where there's a lot of blaming and projection. But that is a symptom of a greater stirring underneath of real need for change, where people need to be creative in a way that works, and brings them wisdom. And right now, the energy is there in the next six months to approach that whole thing in, an, in a, I won't use the word radical, in a truly healthy, honest way where you cut the crap. And you face things as they are, see them clearly, not in a, idealized or conditioned way. Find out who you are, what you want, and what is the most elegant and best way to act upon that. Open up to receiving support and get on with the job of creating a better life, at least in your life. And if you succeed, as you succeed in doing that, extending that to others. So 2020 is well underway. The torch has been lit earlier on this month for radical honesty, for being able to not only be honest, but to take that honesty and do something incredibly positive with it that benefits everybody that includes and involves everybody who's willing to truly be a part of it. And that ultimately shows real compassion without buying into victimhood. That truly serves without trapping people in idealism. That exercises authority with responsibility and really valuing the uniqueness of each individual life. So whatever little difference you make in your life or big difference you make in your life or major change you make in your business with your family and that is going to have such profound flow on effects now, particularly if it takes something negative and turns it into a real asset, something really positive. So that fire has been lit in the next six months. It's, it's available if you want it. All you have to do is just open up to it and look at life as serving you and working with you and starting you on a whole new course rather than it's out to get me. And then learning from that experience. Now, the 23rd of July, what happens there is that there is a very unique synchronicity between the sun in our solar system and one of the nearest stars called Sirius. Now, Sirius is a very bright star. It's actually part of a three star system, but it's a very bright, it's the brightest star in our sky and therefore its energy has a very strong impact on us not as strong as the sun, because the sun is obviously much closer, but it has a strong impact. And the other thing is, 
and I won't go into all the science behind this, but this is not just theoretical. When you look at the way the energy moves through our area of the universe, the simplest way of putting it is we're downstream from Sirius, which means Sirius, the flow of energy from Sirius energizes our solar system, energizes our sun. So there's a lovely synchronistic relationship going on there, a very supportive relationship, a very empowering relationship going on there. And that's been recognized for thousands of years in history in many cultures. They wouldn't have put it in those words, you know, they would have made it much more flowery, maybe religious or poetic or lyrical, but it's been recognized for a long time. And there is a point, Sirius is in the, in the constellation or the zodiac system of Cancer. And it's right at the heart, right in the center of the sign of Cancer. And Cancer is about nurturing, empowering, laying the foundation for things so that there's growth. Things have a strong foundation, they can grow into really fulfilling their potential. And it's very connected to the power that comes from the feminine. Now, our sun in our solar system is most at ease, most naturally in its, in the place where it expresses its full greatness, its glory, at the very beginning of the sign of Leo, which is the next sign after Cancer. So there comes a point in the year where the sun enters the very first degree of Leo, which means it's free to completely do what it does. It's free to do what comes naturally to it. Its energy comes through unfiltered, unadjusted. It's just, it's like a child free to be, it's to do its own thing, do what comes naturally to it. And that is around, right around the 23rd of July. And at the same time as the sun rises on that day, Sirius is about 16 degrees ahead. So it rises just before sunrise on the horizon. It, its energy flows through. It has enough space for it to, for the energy to come through because on the horizon, every star, including our sun, is at its like peak. That's why we like sunrise and sunset. You know, it's like, you can really feel the energy. So the energy of Sirius flows. And then half an hour or an hour later, the sun rises. And there's this beautiful synchronicity of nurturing and support and empowering. And then the sun coming up in its full glory at a point where it's just filling the world with creative energy. And this has been, as I said, recognized throughout history in various forms, and it still happens. And it lights, sets in motion a process that lasts over 60 days. So the 23rd of July, because of those two combinations, is really powerful. There's a lot of creativity being unleashed from our sun, and there's been a lot of supporting, nurturing, empowerment coming in in synchronicity with that from Sirius. And the two are at their best right at that time. They've both got enough space to do their thing. And that means the energy on the 23rd of July always peaks. There is a natural, that's why it's called the most powerful day of the year. And that unleashes a process. That first peak unfolds over 55 days and for 30 of those days the sun is in the sign of leo which means the first 30 days are filled with creative energy filled with the opportunity to you know bring light to the world or you can use all sorts of metaphors but practically it means Build confidence, draw upon confidence, be confident in yourself, 
identify what comes naturally to you, what you do naturally, and use that gracefully to create new possibilities, new options. It's a very creative time. Obviously, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's associated with summer and a lot of heat, but it's like a lot of creative energy. In the Southern Hemisphere, it's, it's a little more chilled, but it's still this creativity in a more chilled form. It's more cool, whereas the Northern Hemisphere tends to, things heat up at that time of year on all sorts of levels. And just watch what unfolds over the next month or so. But the way to use it is to use it for creative application to whatever you're doing, studying at school, building a business, taking care of your family, looking at making real positive changes in your life, re-energizing yourself, creating new options. That's where this is a great time to explore all that and to make sure that those options are aligned with what comes naturally to you. So there's 30 days of that and then the sun moves into Virgo and for another 25 days, I call it, it's like a reality check. It's a reality check. You're going, I've got all these creative possibilities and I've started these things happening and they're really on fire, they're alive, I'm doing what comes naturally. And then it's like, yes, but does it work? Is it healthy for you? Does it actually work in the real world? Are you able to implement this energy in a responsible way? That is healthy. That... Are you doing what you love or have you just got revved up by everybody else's energy rather than your own? And you're just following a whole bunch of ideas that other people have talked you into one way or the other. And is it, but this, does this work for me? So there's this period of creativity, which is like women when they're young or young, young people, you know, hot, fiery, energetic, in starting to get in touch with their power, sexy, let's create something on all sorts of levels, entrepreneurs, families, relationships. And then that's alive and then you need the reality check. It's like checking in with the woman or the man in you. Check in with your mother, <laughs> someone with a bit of experience, <laughs> you know, and say, hey, is this relationship going to work? Is this business going to work? Is this marketing approach going to work? Is this workout regime I've started or this health regime I've started or this diet that I'm taking, is it actually working? Not just in terms of gaining a result, but am I loving what this is doing and how this is enabling me to step up and take responsibility? And I'm doing it willingly, willingly, not because I have to. So there's a, that 25 days. And then around the 15th of September, whew, there's a fade out. It's like, it's let's all take a break. That's been very creative and a lot of work and a lot of responsibility in putting it together so it does work because you can use that second phase to take all the creative ideas and then find the way to make them work and then it's like okay i need a break need a vacation <laughs> take a week off and then september the 23rd the sun enters libra now libra is about Well, it's courage, but it's making sure that things relate. And in terms of the young people being creative and then the mother bringing a sense of reality and practicality to it, the 23rd is like you bring in the grandparents or the elders or the wise men and women. 
and you go, what did I learn from all of this? What wisdom did I gain from the experience? Is this going to be something I can sustain long term? Well, Grandma, Grandpa, you've been there. What do you think? It's that sort of, and you're asking and checking in with the elder in you, whatever age you are. And if you want to do it very practically, go and talk with elders that you have respect for who are still healthy and happy and sober or at least sharing their perspective and ideas without imposing them on you. And then from the 23rd of September, things start rolling towards the end of the year, the completion of the year. So you've had all this stuff come up in the first six months. Then you've got a couple of months to go, okay, what are we going to do with this? How are we going to put this together in a way that we can bring the full force of our creativity and the full force of our ability to be responsible and effective to create something that we really love that actually works for us and other people that's healthy and then evaluate what did we learn? What wisdom did we get out of that? And then as it rolls towards the end of the year, how do I apply that in the real world from a wise, experienced, responsible place? How do I actually do that? And you'll see the unfolding of that. The people who resisted, it's going to create havoc when it comes to just society and the elections and everything else. You know, they'll all be out there being defensive and irresponsible and whatever. But those who take advantage of it now, they've set themselves not up for just for this year, but they've set themselves in a really good solid place for the rest of this decade. It's about moving from constricting things like blame and fear and hopelessness and, you know, all this really constricting negative energy and going, okay, what can we actually do with what we've got? This is where the radical honesty comes in. What's actually going on? I mean, really honestly, what's going on? In my life, start here and then move it out rather than these people out there are to blame and this is, you know, these horrible and this and that. And My life is going, well, if your life is going to crap, own it. And then go, now, what can I do? Be radically honest. What am I doing that's allowing that or creating it, you know, in a very active form? What can I change? Do I want to change radical honesty? Or am I happy being in this role of I'm stuck here or being a victim or whatever? Oh, I like the drama. I mean, that can be very liberating if that's your truth. Well, you still don't have to point the finger. It's like, I love this and I'm indulging in it. And for now, until I choose not to indulge in it, at least I can be at peace with that without blaming anything else or anyone else, God, the world, the universe, or the people around me. That's honesty. Or I don't like this. So what am I doing to, to sustain it? How can I disassociate that, disconnect that, take it, bottle it, turn it into good stuff, and turn it into a real asset that gives me the power and the energy to change my life? Thank you. My Katai, my partner, just sent me a great message. <laughs> She's literally in the middle of a major change today, shifting from one place to another in Thailand. So what I'm saying in simple terms is don't miss out on this incredible opportunity that's coming right now. 
use your imagination. See, the energy behind this, which is sort of taking the energy of our territory, our solar system, our Earth and our sun, and adding to it a, a, access to a energy that's further out there, a little more unconscious, not even so much subconscious, but unconscious. And the beauty about that, when you measure it against your human design, you come up with something really quite amazing. This is the essence, and this is a solution, or at least an approach that will help turn this in a unique way. And the star Sirius is associated with a dynamic in human design, practical reality of a rare ability, an ability that not a lot of people have, which is to not to overcome obstacles, but to bypass obstacles. Oh my God, I've got to climb this mountain to get to my goal, which is over the other side of this mountain. I've got to conquer this. Or you could just walk around the mountain and bypass it. And the way you do that practically is using your imagination to establish patterns in your life that make the obstacles irrelevant. So this is not about denial. This is not about attacking the problem. It's not about even trying to figure out how to play both sides against each other. It's about using your creativity on the particularly your imagination to create new patterns, new ways of living, new ways of tackling your business, new ways of doing your marketing, new ways of building your health new ways of living your life, new ways of relating to your partner and your children, new ways of making money. Establish new patterns that make whatever the obstacle is irrelevant. It's the imaginative energy that will provoke you to bypass the obstacles. Or another way of putting it is you've got an obstacle in your life, which is there to provoke you to use your imagination to bypass it. Your goal becomes, let's make this obstacle, this problem irrelevant by being creative enough to come up with something better that leaves it behind or makes it unnecessary to have to go to war with or tackle. In business terms, that's coming up with a way better process. Something that everybody recognises or that at least enough people recognises it solves their problem without having to drag you through the swamp. Now, again, here's the key. Both of these energies, Cancer and Leo, have a potential for the ego to come in. Now, ego is a healthy part of us, but it can come in and actually play with it with two fundamental strategies. One is, well, you're not living up to that. You failed. You're no good. You don't matter. You're insignificant. Otherwise known as delusions of insignificance. In other words, you don't matter. And the other one is delusions of greatness. Oh, yes, I've found the solution. Right. I've used my imagination and I dream that it's, it's going to, you know, solve all the pro world's problems. And that's why that time where the sun is in Virgo is so crucial. Because you get to check it. Is this something that connects you, reconnects you to love? Is this something you would love to do? 
is this something that brings more love into your life? Tangibly, practically, not idealistically. Does this make sense practically, rationally, as well as imaginatively? Do the two support each other, the logic and the imagination? Do they work together? Because when they don't, it creates separation everywhere. That's why it's so crucial. And if you go through this process to the best of your ability, you're going to come out a lot wiser in late September. And that's why I'm doing this video. Give you the heads up. Now, if you want really specific insight to that, that's my job. That's where I do human design, where I do consultations, where I do periods of consultations with people where we work through it on a practical level. That's also why Dan Silberberg and I are creating this personal power masterclass so that it's literally a masterclass for people who truly want to own the power that they carry within them as a person and apply it in the real world with skills that enable you to do it. Not just talk about it, not just dream about it, not just imagine it, but actually enable you to make a big difference in your life, financially, physically, emotionally, energetically, spiritually, but also influence other people that they can do the same. They can take responsibility. They can become wise. They can find solutions that make the obstacles irrelevant rather than you're out there to conquer them. You turn negativity into an asset in yourself, in other people, in the, in the structure of the world around you. All of those are absolutely crucial. So if you're interested in either of those, working with me so, or me working with you so that the approach is customised to your real needs or you want to participate in a very committed and powerful group of people who are committed to mastering the use of their personal power because it benefits them and what they're up to in their life, what they're achieving, what their goals are in their life and it shows other people the possibility of it. The fact that this isn't just an idealistic theory and then you go back to the same old, same old. But this is real. It makes a real difference. So I hope you've got real value out of this. Listen to it again if you need to. Let it soak in. And then treasure the days ahead, the next couple of months. Because they're offering you the opportunity of really demonstrating that you matter that you have something to contribute, that you can make a difference, not to prove anything, but out of gratitude for the gift of life that you've been given as a celebration of your life while you're here so that you're at peace or satisfied that you feel the success that you have, that you take delight in the beauty of life while you're here every single day. So great talking to you and uh, let's have a great couple of months, a really great couple of months. Talk to you again soon.